This is the image that we're going to be working from. Uh, and um, uh, the reasons that I've chosen this, the reasons this appealed to me, um, is uh, I've mentioned the sun and the shadows. That, that's fine. So we're, we're into that sort of theme. But the variance in the values the, between the light and the dark, uh, I think, uh, are appealing to me here. Not just the light that runs down uh, the path here and the dark that's in the shadow here, but also the uh, light that you get of, off people's heads and shoulders. Um, and in particular, uh, I think I was drawn to these two figures here, these two ladies here. Th this one, who is essentially light against dark, and then this one, conversely, who is dark against light. And I just quite like that play on either side of the composition. Um, I also chose this picture because I just wanted to introduce uh, a, a little bit of a challenge here. I think, I think uh, quite a lot of people who are listening in to this uh, are um, relatively inexperienced, or if, if you are inexperienced, there's every chance, if you're like um, a lot of people I know, that you will find uh, figures a little daunting. So I thought, well, here's the challenge. I've got a photograph here, an image with a lot of figures. Let's see how we can handle this during the course of this um, painting demonstration. Let's see how you can handle it as you're, you're doing your paintings today. Uh, and I think uh, as a general um, starting point on that, uh, I, I um, I'm going to spend maybe a little bit longer with my drawing at the start on the figures, just to help me and to help you, uh, and um, and bring out a number of points about about how you might go around drawing these figures and and to give them some sort of uh, a, a feeling of life in them. So. Uh, uh, as far as the composition is concerned, oh, there, there are a couple of other things I'd like to mention about this. Um, and that, that is all this foliage that we have here. And I, I thought um, that's an interesting problem that we've got here. And I'm going to try and reduce that problem by painting as little of this as I can. I want to make use of uh, this dark tree and the shadow that's cast down here, and um, and also I'm thinking certainly when I did a practice painting of this, I, I brought in something of uh, a, a tree here which also cast shadows. So we 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 sort of enclosed the scene uh, and framed it with with these trees as well as framing it with these two ladies here um, with their shopping. I'm going to begin by establishing the presence of uh, this right-hand figure here, yeah, uh, and, and then relate the other figures to her, as well as the stalls and, and uh, all, all the other aspects of it as well. So in, in trying to work out how you're going to do, do this figure, um, I, I would like the figure to take up, I'll, I'll make a mark here, sort of that, that sort of uh, uh, length uh, uh, of my height of, of my format that I'm, I'm using here and then relate other things to that. I, I think what I'll do is I'll draw a little heavier than I normally do. Um, I know someone last week said that they couldn't see my drawing so maybe if you could pass on a message if I'm not drawing heavily enough but I, I will make some heavier marks than maybe I might normally do. Now this lady is carrying two reasonably heavy bags here 
and I also want to try and give a feeling that she is moving towards me. In drawing uh, figures, err on the side of making the heads smaller than you think you need to make them. So I'm, I've got to fit my figure in that sort of space. Let's, uh, let's see if that's, um, and um, she is a shoulder there and I'm going to have her very slightly with her shoulder like that. She's struggling under the weight of this. Let's just see if I've made this big enough. Um, her, her arms are down there. No, I don't think I've made that quite big enough. Let's have a, make, a bit, make her a little bit larger. Head. Well, quite a full figure. Let's see if I've done that. And her her right leg is just a little forward of her less left leg, which is something like that. And she's got uh, a weight, uh, this plastic bag through which the light is shining. And another one here. Okay, that's, I, I hope the marks I've made on there are heavy enough for, for people to see. So uh, I'm going to relate, um, let me see now, I uh, think I'll play around with the umbrellas a little bit um, and at this stage I think those hopefully those marks I'm making are dark enough Something like that. No, I think that's as far as I'll take those. Th this is uh, a figure in the photograph which is uh, going away from us. Uh, but I'm going to have him coming towards us. So I'm just going to, and I also want him maybe out in the light a little bit further. Um, that, that's why I made this mark here just to get an idea of, I want him to step out. Now, I, I just want him to come out. His, his head, if you're wanting to know uh, how to place him, his head is uh, above the line of this lady and his feet come down sort of in the middle of her, the bag she's carrying there. So in terms of just setting him up, he's going to be something like that 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 might be quite useful just to be aware that he's going to fit into that space now um let's put his head in in that space uh, and i'm going to have him his shoulders going ever so slightly the other way to this lady and uh, let's just see if we can And uh, but I've got him. I've got his his like something like that. He's got an arm down there. He's probably walking along here, something like that. So those in relationship. Okay, I'm happy with that one. Uh, let's um, let me uh, put in something of the.
umbrellas and uh, stalls on this side, leaving a gap. So if I have, and I think I might change the shape of them a little bit, sort of just. Uh, now this side, uh, when I spoke earlier about these two figures, I said that uh, this lady here is going to be light against dark and this one here is going to be dark against light. So this area of the painting, the background of it, including the stalls and everything, are going to be quite light. Uh, and that is also uh, not only to help uh, bring out the, the dark lady that's here, but also to allow the darkness of the tree up here to to come out so that so it doesn't get or get too muddy down there conversely I, I'm, I'm going to make sure that there's a reasonable amount of darkness behind this lady so exactly how I'll end up painting these stalls I don't know but they're going to be something like now she this this one on the left here um, if, if I take a straight line across from her head, she, she, she's in front of the light lady here, but she's larger and therefore she's larger, but she's going to maybe even come out uh, of the uh, bottom of my full um, composition. So let, let's just have her, So she's going to take up quite a bit of space here. I'm, got a, I'm going to go with the tilt of her head. I quite like that. Uh, and let me just see if I've done this large enough. I don't know if I have. No, I haven't done the large enough. So this part that we're doing at the moment is what I would call the first stage of the painting. It's the drawing thinking about the composition. Uh, I did say that uh, this was going to be a little bit more complicated, this one, than certainly the painting we did last time, and, and therefore I'm going to spend a little bit more time in the drawing. But once, once I've established may, maybe just um, four or five figures, then, uh, then that's all really I need to do. I, I'll try and give the impression that there are many other figures a little later on. I'm going to make her larger now. So let's, um, she's going to, let's just see if this will work. And she's got her. Her arm down there, some sort of okay. Well, that, that's larger than I thought I was going to make it, but but that will do, that's fine. So she's quite dominant in this part of the picture, but she's also going to be somewhat contained within the shadows as well. So let's have a, another figure one, two, three. Let's have another one. This, this um, little <laughs> setup here, I. I'm not going to put her in. Uh, I think I'll just put this chap walking. Uh, no, I'll have him walking towards me. And uh, I'll turn him around and have him coming towards me, which, which is a contrast between what these two are doing. So let's have a look. He's, he's uh, roughly maybe a little bit closer than this figure. So he's going to be sort of somewhere there to, in fact, I'll bring him out into this, I'll bring him out of the, um, into the space here, and he's going to come down to, um, just in front, he's going to be something like that. So let's have a look. Um, so when you come around to doing your drawing of this, uh, no need to rush, we've got plenty of time. Uh, th this will possibly be the most complicated part of the uh, painting uh, and uh, so just take your time. So let's have a look at this chap. He's, he's sort of walking uh, towards... Um, uh, 
A, bod a body is very much a sort of triangle. Pretty much a triangle, some abbreviation of that. Let's have him... Um, Something like that, and he's got an arm down here. There, he, he's he's meant to be coming towards. That. I've probably done his head too large, so. Right. Um, I'm not going to. Do I put any other figures in? I, I'll put a couple of figures in here, but we'll we'll more or less lose them. Let's say they're going to be. And, and think about them in relationship to this figure you've done here. I, I talked about this sort of triangle. They're, they're going to be sort of something like that, talking to each other, maybe, possibly, it, mostly in the shade. And we'll, we'll see, there's going to be some someone else in there that's as far as i think now you're very welcome to put in other figures you you, you may want to put some in here or others uh, uh in here and and quite often as the painting develops and you'll find there are little bits of the painting which might make a good head and you'll add you'll make use of it and add it as a head but we'll we'll see that that's that's my busyness here that, that's going on at this stage. I, I'm, um, I'm going to have some sort of tree up here. Going to have certainly going to have some leaves anyway. Possibly here. Um, uh, th th this part. This is disappearing here into um, the woods or the edge of the park or whatever it is. And we we've, we've got a sort of channel here, but. I'm, I'm, I was quite keen to bring him out, certainly of the sh of the shadows, uh, and I, that for me is as much drawing. In fact, it's much more drawing than I normally do uh, to get going on this. The, the types of paints I've got are, I'm pretty sure they're all Winsor Newton. Um, the majority of them are transparent paints as opposed to opaque. Some of them are semi-opaque. Um, I, I, think, I think the cobalt that I'm pointing out here, cobalt blue is semi. Um, th this color here, manganese blue, is I, actually, I'm playing around with it. I normally use cerulean blue, but um, this is a more transparent, not dissimilar type of blue, and, and I, I'm, I'm the jury's out for me on this one. I'm still playing around with it. Otherwise, I, when I paint, I will mention the name of each of the colours, but they are exactly as in the picture that Lois has sent out to you. Um, as are, well, mostly the, the brushes. Uh, so I'm going to be using a um, quite a large uh, mop brush. It's a squirreled hair brush. Uh, the, the two good things about this is that it will hold a lot of water and that it will come to a really nice point uh, so that it can be used for washes and for some sort of detail. So I'm going to be using that. And as I bring out other brushes, I'll mention what they are and begin this painting. Okay. This is uh, sun and shadow. So uh, ultimately, I want this to have uh, a good deal of light and warmth in it, uh, as well as um, the values that I mentioned earlier about the light and the dark values here. The um, background, I'm going to, in this stage, what I'm going to do is, is pretty much cover all of the paper. I might leave a couple of bits out um, and lots of little sort of bits here and there. I might leave out these, something to do with these two plastic bags this lady um, is carrying. It's got light coming through there. Um, and, but, but mostly I'm going to put uh, light colors down here, uh, mostly wet on wet. In fact, nearly the whole thing wet and that the, the whole paper is going to be quite damp. 
Uh, and then at the end of that, I'm gonna dry that before I go on to the third stage. So let's, uh, I'm gonna begin with the top of this by putting in uh, something to do with the sky and something to do with the, the, the foliage here, which is uh, catching the light and uh, warm foliage uh, at this stage. So I'm gonna use ultramarine blue here. Uh, I think everyone can see that. Let's move it a bit closer. Right, is that better? Yeah, all right. I'm going to uh, load up with ultramarine blue and put that, now that's not strong enough, so let's work some of that in here. Um, and and I think also I'll, I'm gonna use a warm yellow. I've, I've got three different yellows here. Uh, a lemon, which is my coolest, greenest yellow. Then I've got a gamboge, a new gamboge, which is the, the, the warmest yellow. They've got the most amount of red, extra red in it as well. And then this color, which is aurelian, uh, I'm going to use that. I, I want a warmish red to go here where all the, uh, the trees are, but I'm, I'm conscious that I do want all of this to be in the background uh, later on. So picking up some of this and bringing it down around the canopies. And let that work its way in here. Okay, uh, that's all, all pretty wet. We'll see what comes of that as it, uh, as it works its way into each other. Now uh, I'm going to bring in some warmth to the, uh, the, the ground and a, a lot of that's going to be spread around the rest of the uh, painting here. So I'm going to go for some raw sienna, this color. My paintings are very on a very slight slope here. Yeah, I generally like to work like that and um, so inevitably some paint's going to run down. I've got But um, take that over quite a lot of the painting. Especially when I come down to the foreground a little bit, I'm just using at the moment uh, almost a dry brush, but there, there is water going on here. Um, And I want to liven up this and warm up uh, this surface that I've got here. So uh, I'm going to go for, for some burnt sienna. And bring that down here. There is water, lots of water on the paper already. That's been put there because of the raw sienna I, I, I put on, let's, let's, um, oh, I've gone over my, my lady here, it doesn't, it doesn't matter too much, the ways around that, um, I'll come back to that in a moment, um, I'm using uh, another mop brush here, a smaller one. And here I want to bring in the color 
that is the garments and everything that's on sale and you can sort of go along and make this up really as you like bear in mind you've got quite a bit of water and dampness in the paper already so um, I'm going to drop in various colors along here you, you make make it up as as you go along let's uh, put in some blue things happening here and these can all run into each other no worries at all that's what we're hoping for colors I've uh, used um, some vermilion red, I've used some new gamboge. Uh, uh, I've got a, a, a green here that I call sap green. Um, I'm going to pop in some greens, things that might be garments hanging down here. Actually, looking, let's, let's put a bit of crimson in here. This paint will all, as with watercolor, will all dry a lot lighter than, than it's shown here. Um, Okay, so everything's wet. This is still wet here. I'm just wondering whether I might bring a little bit more down here. Let's, um, I'll, I'll go to some burnt umber. How are we doing here? As the painting develops, I'll, I'll be wanting to create some interest in what's going on in the ground here anyway, but uh, I might as well start off the way I want to continue, just bring something in here. I'm pretty much painting over um, all the figures. That, that really doesn't matter too much. Um, that, I think, is where I'm getting to with the the, first, the second part of the, the painting, the light, the light uh, wet colors going on here. When I do begin the next one, this will be dry. And, and uh, I, if necessary, I'll get the hairdryer out and I'll do something with that uh, in order to make sure it's dry. I think I'll, uh, I'll start up at the top and as much as possible work down or left to right just to save running my my art my hand through the paint but as, as much as i'm able to do that and um uh, this this is going to have some dark leaves uh, of the tree in in it eventually uh, but they can go over something that i'm going to put in lighter here so i'm going to go dark i'm going to bring in some green uh, hair which is going to help us give some sort of idea of the foliage um, 
but I'm conscious that I'll also be bringing something darker into that as well later on. So, <clears throat> um, wherever possible, I try and mix my own greens. Um, I, I do have a sap green here. Um, I very rarely ever use it. It's a shortcut green, really, in a sense for me. I very rarely ever use it on its own, and more often than not, I'm using it and bringing some more yellow into it or some more blue into it or red or something of that nature but in this case I'm going to um, I'm going to pick up this aurelian color which is the color that I I used on here uh, and see if I can create a a green by using some ultramarine blue on it here. Um, and, and then I'm going to use that around here to create the green to allow the yellow to sing, sing out a little bit. Uh, and what have I got here? Is that No, it's not dark enough. It's uh, I want it to be a bit stronger than that. If your watercolor is not really strong enough, it will it'll just be a bit wishy-washy at the end. Let's see if that gives me something. Someone's asking, is your paper flat, Mike? It's on a slight slope. Very, very slight. It's just raised up a little bit. Um, So I'm using the small wash uh, brush here. Um, I'm using uh, the, the pointed bit to get these sorts of marks. I'm con th this is create some sort of idea of foliage here. Um, and I'm able to pick up quite a lot of this paint because of the, the mop nature of the brush. I'll bring that down to some of these areas here where the umbrellas are. Added some water to it just to make some of these marks a little lighter. And nearly always with watercolor, you'll you'll benefit by leaving little uh, gaps and marks, and rather than just making the whole thing a a flat wash. Um, And I'm going to do the same up here, but I think I'll just change it a little bit. I'll um, add a little bit of, say, crimson. What's, what's that going to give me? That's a little bit too brown. Let's try going back and um, a little bit of burnt sienna. I'm going to have, I think I mentioned at the start, some sort of leaves coming over here, but uh, I'll change the type of green that I'm using. Okay, we'll be working over the top of that. In fact, what I will do is whilst things are slightly wet there, I'll pick up some ultramarine blue and make that green a little darker. And 
and not too much water because there's plenty of water and I'm just going to just add a little bit there that that can sort of be painting its its way in a bit Remember, I wanted this area to be quite light uh, in order for the dark figures to be up against it. So um, so these mop brushes are, are really good. I'll just work around that figure. All of this will dry a little bit darker when it does dry. And yeah, let's leave that for a moment and see, see where what that will give us uh, a little bit later. And we'll be going in with some darks over that, so that that's that's enough there. Now, um, what I would uh, what I'm going to do now is to bring in some shadow, which uh, will be in in and amongst the garments here uh, and again I'm conscious I'll be bringing in some darker details later on so I want to bring in some shadow here I want that shadow to come out onto the road here and here um, underneath the, the figures that I've got here this sort of shadow, the shadow area here. And I want to bring in some of these shadows that are coming across uh, the pathway and do all that at this stage. So I'm going to use the shadows which are primarily uh, a blue, but um, but I'm happy to vary them a little bit uh, as I go on. Let's let's mix up. A, I'm going to mix up a shadow so that I can play around with what's happening uh, under the umbrella uh, that we've got here and around the people. Let's change that. And I'm going to do that with using um, this this smaller mop brush uh, with a point on it and make a shadow colour so Jennifer wanted to know what queen that was because she lost the audio just at that point. What, what was that question? She wanted to know what the green was because she lost the audio. Well the green was one that I'd mixed up with this um, aurelian or cadmium yellow and uh, Ultramarine blue. I've made that and that's the green that I've used there primarily. I added a bit of red to it here uh, on, on that one. Now, now that, that was the green. I, I just got rid of that little bit because I, I actually wasn't very happy with the colours. So I'm now mixing up a shadow that I'm going to bring in on here by using ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. A little bit of that. A little bit at a time. I want it to be, I want it to be quite blue, but too much burnt sienna, and it'll go too brown. So what have we got there? Let's have a look. Now, um, if you're painting along with me here, you 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 get the idea of um, what what I'm doing. The, uh, I, I, I mentioned before, I'm quite keen that this part of the picture is, is light to, to facilitate the dark that's going to go over it and also to suggest that it's maybe a little further away. So the shadows that I do are going to get in increasingly a little bit darker as, as I go along here. So let's just see if I can start to and, and here you, you can start to make your own, yeah, that's going to be all right. You can make your own um, 
garments hanging down. I'll just do this bit you can see the term. Um, uh, when it comes down to near where the road is, uh, maybe I'm going to bring in a few more horizontals. I'll ultimately to suggest where the, the bottom of the shadow lies as well, but there may well be um, tables or things on tables, a suggestion of those here. These are the garments that are hanging down. The sun's shining this way, uh, strongly through here, and probably quite strongly around here. I'll show you the photograph, it's coming along here and quite strongly in here. The, 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 a lot of the shadow is going to be down this end because there's less sun directly on it. So the sun's streaming uh, uh, along past these um, uh, canopies here. And similarly, I, I'm not sure what's happening here. Maybe, maybe it's it's part disappearing. This is partly there's maybe some are there any tables? I'm not sure. I'm really not quite sure what's happening here. But uh, I do want it just to be a dark area that disappears. So I'm going to leave some little. Um, gaps and spaces there. But with the sun streaming down this way, I, I'm happy to create one or two shadows that are going at an angle like that, maybe. Sun coming through that way. And um, I'll, I'll also just bring something on that outer edge of the canopies there. Really don't want to do a great deal more to that area. Uh, and, and now move on here. Now, um, one shadow in here, but I do want a lot of um, the light coming through. And so let's just see. <clears throat> Where you come up to little figures you might have drawn, and you, uh, you, you know that this might be a figure that's going to catch the light a little bit, then um, feel free to just put a little bit of shadow around that figure, um, just to give the impression, just to help to bring out what's going on here, uh, the light that's hitting their heads. Okay. This chap's Gonna have some light on him. I've... Okay, and we're, we're then coming down to the bottom here. So it's if in doubt, just leave lots of little gaps, and you can play around with it. So we've got shadows. Because the, because things are a little further away from us, the, 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 we're going to have the leaves and everything showing up as shadows here. But when when things go further away from you, the, they become a little more horizontal. So, and I, I want the shadows with people half half in them as well. So this little 
brush is great for um, getting the lines and the details as well as the washes uh, that are going on there. Let's um, do a little bit more around here. This guy. I, I think I said at the start, I was quite keen to get him with um, some light on him. His shoulders look a little bit big to me here, so I'm going to reduce that. I'm going to be taking this on here um, and giving some sort of a suggestion eventually that there may be some tables here, but no, but nothing uh, too specific. And take my darkness around that lady because I know there's going to be light on her shoulders here, and I'm happy to have either I can do it now or a little bit, uh, quite quite a bit of. Uh, light uh, uh, darkness around her. So let's just bring out some Okay Last week we did washing hanging from a balcony. This, this, this time we're doing linen and stuff hanging from within these canopies, these uh, stalls. Where you've got the um, feet of the people on the ground, then it's quite a good idea to kind of lose those um, in the shadows. You see, I've, I've done that as much as possible with the people that we got in here and including this chap here. He's going to get lost in those shadows. I deliberately didn't put any figures in here, but you may well wish to do so because I just wanted to just have these four main figures suggesting that it was a busy scene, but you may well have decided to do that. And I'm going to bring the shadow. I run out of paint, so I'm going to bring shadows down this way now, and they they can they they can link in with these. Let's just made some of those a little bit lighter, and they'll 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 get okay. Um, done quite a bit of shadow there. Um, All right, just, just move around. Now, before I move around here, um, do I want to do anything to these figures just at the moment? I'm, I'm not convinced I 
really need to do so. No, I don't think I need to do so. Um, no, that's fine. So uh, I'm going to mix up some more paint here um, for the shadow, but uh, I'm probably going to make this a little bluer here. As, as it's a little closer to us in the main. So go back to French ultramarine blue. That's probably the, the paint that I use more than anything else is blue. And a little bit of burnt sienna, another very popular color. And Make sure I've got a good quantity of this. See how that goes. Okay. Um, Let's just make that a little bluer. I'm still using the same brush. Uh, now here I've got much more of a feel, particularly in the foreground of the dapple light that comes, that's streaming from the trees around here. Um, but also to do with um, things going uh, away from you a little bit. Um, as they do go, the, the shadows will probably uh, be a little flatter. Um, it's just, just so I'm, I'm creating this sort of dab of light um, here. Uh, now, I think what I want to do is, is I want to get um, some dab of light on this lady's dress, but and I, I won't worry about that till the next stage but uh yeah so now I, I won't worry about that till the next stage we'll deal with that a little bit later on so i've got a so a combination of being able to use the mop brush um, quite flatly and, and get a lot of paint down and using it as its point as well. Let's bring that. I always felt in this one I wanted to somehow join up the shadows but I didn't want to dominate the foreground too much with shadow uh, to, to make it I didn't want the shadows to be too heavy let's just see what that's given us now I think whilst these shadows are a little bit still a bit wet I'm just going to mm, I'm just going to add some color to them I'll pick up some crimson and uh, and just put a little bit in there. That will that will all work its way in. Um, adds a bit of warmth to it and maybe cools the shadows down a little bit. We'll see how that works. Now I'm looking at the painting, just wondering whether I need to do anything else at this stage. The next stage will be to do with the detail. Uh, I haven't done anything on the figures, so I can do that later on. Um, I've established the darker areas over the light. 
and um, and I've left it open now to oh yeah there is one thing I'll do I'll just put some shadow on as I did with these umbrellas I'll just put some shadow on uh, these umbrellas here suggestion of these shadows. I just put added some water to that that shadow color just to bring some shadows in there. The two little dapple bits. There. I, that, that's as far as I'm going with this next and third stage before we move on to all the details and the final bit to get it going. So having got a um, a fairly light, um, very wet and wet sort of uh, second, first stage of the painting, second stage. I then uh, brought in, started bringing in some darker areas. I, I used uh, some greens here, over, over which I know I'm going to be painting some darker areas for the background, uh, trying to leave some of the yellow showing through. Um, I, I, in that green, I dropped in some little darker bits there to, to maybe help to emphasize the uh, the light that's on the umbrella and also to, to push it all back and then came in with um, w basically the shadows then creating the idea of garments hanging up here generally speaking using the shadow that I mixed slightly lighter and then bringing it up here getting a bit darker with the, the, the shadows um, as they came under the canopy up here, making sure that uh, I, I got the figures coming out because of the shadows that are allowing them to do that. And then brought the same thing over here, um, broke, broke it up a bit. So there's some suggestion of dapple light. Uh, and I, I think also where, where, wherever possible, I, I brought shadows, I brought the figures the shadow into the figures or the figures into the shadows so that when we do the figures that we're going to do very little well some of the least amount of painting we'll do will be the legs of of these figures and they're going to just sort of blend in with uh, the shadows all right this is the last stage which um i call the detail stage and um uh in the main it will be um, dark, very dark colours, uh, although right at the end I, I think there'll be a need here to bring in some, let's just get rid of all this chat because it's blocking my screen off there, in, there'll be some need to bring in some uh, light uh, colours, in, in, in fact even some white uh, just to bring in some highlights. So uh, I'm going to work on um, mixing. Uh, I'll, I'll continue to use this brush as long as I can do so, but I may well uh, go across to a rigger brush or even this uh, dagger brush as well. Um, I, I do have some other brushes, sort of brushes like that, which I, I, I may or may not use, but. Um, Let's let's start off with the, the mop that I've been using until now because it's it's a um, a rosemary mop. This I, I don't get any money from rosemary for saying this, but uh, it's a pure squirrel little mop brush, and uh, it comes to a really nice point. Now, let's see. I'm going to begin um, a little bit as I did before up at the top, uh, uh, and I'm going to bring in some. Uh, the, 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 the tree leaves here which are in the main throwing a lot of the shadows down onto here and then work my way um, around 
the rest of the painting. I'm, I may well dart around a little bit, but uh, I'm certainly going to begin with that. And uh, I want a strong colour to use for that. A colour that I will be using that um, is this colour I'm pointing to here called uh, Neutral Tint. It's um, pretty much the same as Payne's Grey, except Neutral Tint's a more transparent colour. Um, and although I will probably not usually use it on its own, uh, I find it's a, it's a great colour just to add to something if you want to make it a bit darker. So I'm going, going to, um, I'm going to bring in a, um, a dark greeny red colour here. So let's, uh, let's see what I'm going to do. I'll, let's go for the um, lemon yellow down here. And bring some French ultramarine into that. So I, that, that gives me a green. Now I'm going to be using the paint quite, quite dry. It's not going to be terribly wet here. Just a bit more. And I'll put some crimson in with that because I want it to go darker. So I've got yellow, blue, and red, which is the good old colours for making a dark sludgy colour here. So that's mm, maybe gone a little bit too red. Although it may not be a bad idea. Let's just see what I've got. Um, I'm going to touch of water with that because I want a little bit more paint. So I'll add some more French blue. And bring in uh, my, my darkness here. Now, I don't want to overcook this, so if I put too much on there, I, I think the whole thing's going to become a bit heavy up there. It's just telling a story about where the light's being thrown down at the moment. So I'm able to use this brush to get areas uh, larger areas and then little areas down here and then little marks I want, I want to, this, this is all coming from a tree. Um, so I think I'll, you want to be a bit careful about putting too much detail right on the edges of your compositions. Um, as, as it's quite nice just to sort of taper that, that uh, it helps to focus that will take away from the focus and what may be elsewhere in the painting, but I, I, I would like to make a, some sort of statement about something here. And some of these marks are going to be a little bit lighter, so I'll just get a little bit of water and make one or two marks there. Um, I'm going to add some crimson to that, Back to the green, just a, just little bits there. Green and red are complementary colours, and and sometimes putting them next to each other just adds a little bit of a zing. So just something there at the moment on on that. Okay, um, there's quite a lot of green in that, so I'm going to mix up a dark colour where there isn't so much green, and uh, I'll go for the French blue again, and burnt sienna. I could use burnt umber, um, but here I'm, I'm mixing up a, a dark colour, 
I'm going to need a little bit, not a lot. I'm going to use this mostly quite dry, but uh, let's just have some up my sleeve. So now I don't know how dark that's going to be. That's not, it's too brown. So I'm going to add some more blue and some neutral tint. Let's right, see how I get on with this this brush. If not, I'll I'll go for a smaller one. Um, a, a rigger. In fact, I'll go for a rigger because I'm I'm using this rigger brush. This thin brush. It's just a sort of synthetic hair brush. Right. I'm going to put one or two little marks in here to. Uh, suggests the very dark areas um, and, and back here under this part of the market um, uh, I want it I, I've told you I've mentioned a couple of times I want to try and keep it a lighter as light as possible because of the these two figures this figure in particular here so um, whilst I want to bring in some detail. I don't want to over overcook that. Uh, I'm going around this fella's head here because I know I'm going to want some light on his head, and uh, he's a little bit, his head was a little bit big. So let's just right, I'll come back to that if I need to. Let's move around the uh, the market scene that's um, a little bit of extra around this guy's head and some sort of something suggests something's going on in the background there. Um, that, that, that little bit of the market scene I just wanted to push that away and, and that helps to give some sort of depth to the painting. All right, let's move on. I'm switching between my um, uh, that mop and my rigger here. Let's um, just bring in, and you're making up your own scene, almost story about where the light is, how the light's coming in. Um, I, I I only want to put in enough here to suggest some extra darkness uh, um, and to make the shadows work. So now I've got some figures here. Let's just, um, I'll go around these figures for the moment. There's a figure there that I'd quite like to emphasize, someone in the background. If you want to make these dark marks lighter, just add a little bit of water if you feel that they're too dark, but they will be drying darker. And um, where's that figure gone? We're going to bring some darkness around it. Okay. The light is shining, as I said before, particularly on this area uh, along here. So the, the, the values can be quite strong to try and emphasize the light shining on those bits that are light, let's just um, get 
his head was a bit big. I often find that no matter how much I tell myself to draw the head small, they always end up a bit big, so I end up making them smaller again. So we've got, um, I'll, I'll deal with the figures a little bit later on, but I'm just putting some darkness around them where I think it might be useful. Okay. This lady in the front has got quite a halo of light around her head, so um, let's help that work. Um, by bringing a good deal of darkness around. I said that I wanted this area back here to be quite dark compared with the other area. So that so I am employing quite a lot of the the darkness to make it darker, like that sweep that I, I put in there of dark. Now what's going on here? Hmm. Not quite sure. Um, I need to mix up some more of that dark paint. Blue, burnt sienna. Uh, neutral tint, let's see what it's giving me. give some sort of a suggestion of a table maybe. So I imagine a lot of you are painting along with me here, uh, which is a good thing, working out where you want to make your, um, the, the creating your own sort of market scene. A few, a few little um, uh, uprights would be a, probably a good idea. And Derlu is asking, where is the horizon on this picture? Horizon, mm, good one, that. Um, if by that you mean where your eye level is, um, I, I think, I'm just trying, I'm, I'm sort of looking at my photograph and looking at the painting. Um, it's sort of that sort of line, maybe. It's a difficult one to, to answer that in a picture like this. Yes, I, I would have said 
I would have held my camera up in about that sort of a line. Um, right, let's um, let's move over here, um, and. And deal with these figures and, and this area, what's going on here. Right, let's have a look at this. Um, I'll deal with this figure and, and then move along here. So, um, uh, before I do that. I think I'll put in a few flesh turns, particularly as I've got people walking towards me um, here and uh, arms and things of that nature. So I'll uh, may maybe mix up a little bit of red with my burnt sienna and um, and put in something which might give some indication of. So with the, the arms and um, any legs, uh, I'll try and make those just as, just as much a little mark as possible. Uh, let's put something in. Yeah, this chap's coming towards us, we said, didn't we? So he's walking and he's got his arms coming down here. Um, and she's coming towards us. Let's give her. Something and um, Okay, I, I think that that would be fine for me to to work with, um, and let's put something on her. Uh, I'm going to bring some light coming on her, but what I am going to bring on her, uh, she is. She is in a sort of dapple light here. I'm going to give her a black dress. Let's make that a little bit darker. With some French blue and neutral tint. And and leave um, a little dapple light coming onto her her back and other parts of of her maybe not so much around this side she's a pretty powerful dominant figure here so um, I'll make use of that handbag she's got here I think a little bit of 
right on that. Just asking, what was the base skin tone colour? Uh, I've used um, burnt sienna with a little bit of um, uh, vermilion or light red or something like that, just to, to to make it sort of stand out a little bit. Um, yeah. All right. Let's. Um, I, I think also whilst I'm here, just so, so her legs. I think she needs, I'm going to bring a shopping basket or something like that down here. Let's see how that goes. Um, shopping basket, you know, one of these trolleys. She's, uh, I think she's waiting for someone to come and pick her up or, because um, she's got all this stuff to carry. So let's just do a little trolley down here. That's going to have some double light on it as well. Maybe a wheel. And add some add some neutral tint to that. A shopping basket. Right, let's have a look at this chap here. Um, young fella striding purposefully. Towards us. Um, mix up a um, it's a light grey colour for to pick up one of these sort of shadowy areas that that I got in my palette. Um, make that a bit darker. So leave a bit of light around his shoulders. And um, I give him some dark trousers like. Uh, he can sort of, his feet can disappear into the shadows there. Don't let's get um, too detailed about that. Yeah, okay. Um, and I move across now to this chap. Um, let's put some darkness. One side of his head. Let's see if I can give him some kind of a blue shirt of some description. Let's just add a bit of that in there and um, pick up some dark neutral tint, some blue, uh, quite dry, and we're going to give him. Um, some trousers, his lower half. We'll put in as little as we can get away with his, that leg that disappears.
he's got shadow down this side because of the sun's coming down. So let's put some. Shadow in there. And now our lady at the front. Uh, what are we doing? Okay, we've got just under half an hour. Uh, just get her done and then we'll finish off with a few details. And here we go. Uh, I'm, I'm going to um, give her a, a light address of some description. Maybe, um, maybe mix up some raw sienna, pick up a little bit of Whilst, whilst I'm just letting that dry, let's just put some shadow down the side of her face. Leaving a bit of light going around her, her hair there, but I can come back and, and deal with that in a moment. Um, And what's in a shopping basket? Let's just put something in. Something in there. It's 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 obviously um plastic bag of some kind. It's um Bring in some shadow here now that this is a little bit drier. And the legs, just uh, just try and lose them in the shadow a little bit. Um, I'm just going over some of these. I thought they were a little bit too bright. There we are. And uh, last bit, I'm going to go sort of one or two very dark marks. I want I want to try and get some horizontals and verticals in here, if possible. So I'm, I've gone back to my uh, ultramarine blue and. Um, neutral tint and um, let's just work our way. I want to just create um, maybe a few posts. Marks there. Um, I haven't uh, done anything about these figures and I'm running out of time. So let's just um, suggest that there might be something there. I'll, I'll come back with some white and suggest there's some light on their heads in a moment. Um, And I want to um, I'll just 
just um, sort of add some, some marks here, which um, you know, suggest maybe a little bit of, well, not so much rubbish, but just uh, uh, break up some of this foreground. What I haven't done is added some of the foliage there that I said I was going to do. So let's go to something dark. Uh, I'm going to make this a, a slightly redder one. Um, add some crimson to, to this. Um, I'm using my mop and I'm going to pick up uh, a few little, I, I don't know, branches, leaves or something, just, just to, this is one of the things I said I wanted to do at the start. And finally, with um, some gouache white and using it straight out of the tube. There are areas here that I painted over, possibly deliberately, but this wants to be quite dry. I'm going to just bring in a few little uh, highlights. I think with these, you, you want to be careful about overdoing them. Uh, uh, this chap's walking towards us. Let's just put something on his shoulders. Um, I'll put just Maybe that lady there a little bit. Uh, I don't think I'll do any more on her. Let's um, bring in some, some, possibly some light here with the figures. A little bit for this guy. He's half in and half out of the light. And our lady here. Light catching one or two uprights. And I think, I think Lois, we're running out of time, aren't we? Yeah, we are. Okay, so 
Um, that's where I've got 